go to google and type rathods is then you can see our website rathods is academy there you have to click on login or register in the blue color so if you have not registered yet you have to click on do not have account and fill the details so after once you have logged in click on the courses there you can see course list and in this course list you can see wide range of courses hi this is usha welcome to rathod's is classes today in this lecture we are going to see current affairs of 30th june 2022 so let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote so today's quote is motivational quote especially to motivate the students who are going to write this year mains and even who are going to start their preparation fresh so quote here is life is not about having everything it is about finding meaning in everything so actually number of upsc aspirants uh, they might be seeing about topers blog and they will be feeling that i don't have this i don't have this uh, this guidance i'm not having this i'm not having financial finances to go to hardly like that but life it is not about having everything but we need to find meaning of everything so even though if you are not having resources if you have a strong will obviously that will will drives you and finally that will helps to clear this upsc so please trust in yourself be confident and first article here it is regarding blue pacific initiative so this topic i collected from indian express you can see on the screen so here this topic which is mainly talking about countering of china as you all know that chinese presence which had been increased in this indo pacific region so because of this many countries they want to limit this uh, this china and especially there is increasing of power shift a power shift which mainly happened from this uh, east uh, west to east towards west okay so from atlantic so the power which mainly shifted towards this indo pacific region, that is west to east so here why there is a shifting of this power so to understand this we need to know importance of this indo pacific region so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail and i will try my level best to show the map and as well some important details as well so first important thing here is you have to know about this pbp that is partners in blue pacific so if you see context mainly says that us and its allies that is australia new zealand japan and you okay us and its allies like us australia new zealand japan and uk they mainly launched a new initiative so the name of this initiative is partners in the blue pacific so the initiative name is partners in the blue pacific and they has been launched especially for effective efficient cooperation pacific island nation so they mainly came up with launching of this partners in the blue pacific especially for the effective efficient cooperation in this pacific island nations so if you are talking about indo pacific region where it present so here this region it is our indo pacific region right so this region it is our indo pacific region and they are mainly focusing on this blue pacific so blue pacific is nothing but we need to go for upliftment and even we are focusing on free and open area and proper trade and if you are talking about india india which is mainly focused on this act east policy and we are mainly following a free set of ties okay so these are some important components of this blue pacific reach blue pacific policy so if you are talking about especially some facts regarding this pbp so what are the things that we are going to discuss now that might be very very important for your prelims so you can get a question like recently pbp is seen in news so what it is related to so actually it is an informal mechanism of these five countries that is usa and its allies they came together and they formed this informal mechanism and why they formed this especially to support to support what to support pacific islands and they want to boost diplomatic and economic ties in this region and this initiative is also focusing on enhancing prosperity and even resilience or okay, resilience and actual well security in this region so what are the important objectives of this pbb so first one is it want to boost diplomatic and economic ties and they want to come up with prosperity resilience and security in this region and they want to achieve this mainly through cooperation 
so without cooperation we can't do anything so here in this ppp so countries that is us and its allies they mainly come together and individually and they want to counter especially chinese aggressive outreach they want to counter chinese aggressive outreach in this region and the members of this initiative they mainly declared that they will elevate pacific regionalism and they want to forge stronger ties with this pacific islands forum okay so they want to increase regionalism and even they want to protect this e region and to counter this chinese aggressive outreach in this region so if you are talking about which are the areas of cooperation between these five countries so they are focusing on climate crisis so as you all know this pacific region which is very much famous for this pacific ring of fire so because of this pacific ring of fire there will be lot of earthquakes there will be lot of volcanoes that mainly happens in this region so here we need to focus on this climate change especially mainly to control this type of events and next one is we need to focus on connectivity and cooperation between these nations and they are also focusing on maritime security and maritime protection as well and they are also focusing on health and as well as prosperity so these are some important areas of cooperation between these five nations so you have to remember this and next one is what is the rationale so why they came up with this type of uh, formation of informal mechanism so first one is there is increased geostatic competition which happened in this region there is increasing of competition as you all know if you are talking about especially china china which mainly started with aggressive policy and wanted to extend its power okay in this pacific sphere of influence so because of increasing of chinese influence in this region and recently china which mainly came up with number of uh, projects okay number of agreements with this 10 pacific nations and recently in may 2022 chinese came up with a sweeping agreement with the 10 pacific nations for example including the security of fishes etc and because of this what happened western countries especially they feel that so there will be increasing of power of this china in this region and that will lead to eventually military presence in this region so because of this they want to increase their presence in this region and next one is recently china which mainly came with agreement with the solomon islands okay that is security pact with the solomon islands so the solomon islands which is very much strategically near to this us territory that is goa okay so because of this it is also one cause of concern for usa okay and if you are talking about what are the steps that are mainly taken by us and allies to counter this china earlier so we need to talk about three important things so first one is ipef that is indo pacific economic framework for prosperity so first step here is indo pacific economic framework for prosperity ipef so here ipef which is mainly focused okay on boosting the play with the region in this 13 countries okay so those certain countries they want to focus here is australia brunei india indonesia japan malaysia new zealand philippines singapore south korea thailand fiji and as well as vietnam so here one country which is not part here is north korea so even though here us which is a uh, which is mainly supporting the south korea against this north korea so because of this north korea which is not part of this ipef so in this way if you know the history then you will understand easily which country which is not part okay and if you see here this indo pacific economic framework of for prosperity which is mainly focusing on trade boosting play it is mainly containing 13 nations as partners and the next one is pgii that i discussed in yesterday's lecture that is partnership for global infrastructure and investment and here it is mainly focusing on countering of this chinese belt and road initiative and they raised fund about dollar 600 billion fund okay to come up with projects in this low and middle income countries and next important step here is maintained a balance of power in the region with its hub and spoke model so hub and spoke model is not like nothing okay it is like this so one area which is connected with the number of areas through spokes it is called as hub and spoke model so us which has maintained a balance of power in the region with its sub uh, which is hub and spoke model and this system okay and this system which is mainly 
or on the security which mainly guaranteed by US military power as well. So these are the three important reasons. And if you're talking about islands in this Pacific Ocean, we will be having three groups that is Micronesia, Melanesia and as well as Polynesia. So Micronesia, Melanesia and Polynesia. And you have to see different islands which are mainly present okay, in this Polynesia, Micronesia as well as Melanesia. So this topic I dealt in this uh, detail in our map series of geography. So for the students who subscribe to this uh, geography, then they will be getting access to that map. So if you're talking about this Pacific Islands Forum. So there are a number of countries that are mainly part of this Pacific Islands Forum. So you can go through this one. So this might be also important from your prelims. And if you're talking about why this Indo-Pacific region is important, because of five reasons we are going to discuss now. So first reason here is, according to US Department of Defense report 2019, so it said that here Indo-Pacific is the single most consequential region for America's future. So for America's future, they need to focus on this Indo-Pacific region. And second one is huge geography. As you all know, especially in the western coast of the United States and as well as, a, uh, and as, well as the western shores of India. Yes, we are having a huge geography. And next one is huge population. As you all know, world's most populous countries like China, India and as well as largest Muslim, pop Muslim majority population like Indonesia, they are mainly covering here. So we have this huge population. And next one is military importance. So here among the 10 largest standing economies or armies, so if you're talking about armies especially, so if you're talking about 10 largest standing armies in the world, so out of the seven which may reside in this Indo-Pacific region. And next one is trading power. So actually this region which is one of the trading important trading route and even we have a choke point here that is state of Malacca. So here actually 9 out of world's 10 busiest seaports are in the region and about 60% of this global marine trade transects which mainly happens through Asia and while well, roughly one third of this uh, uh, global shipping which mainly passes through the South China Sea route. So because of all links, these things, the first one is here US Department of Defense report which mainly says that future of America which mainly depends on this Indo-Pacific region and because of huge geography, population, military and as well trading power. So for all these reasons, so this Indo-Pacific region is very very important. And now let us try to see one main question based on this topic. India's carefully calibrated policy towards Indo-Pacific is centered on two pillars of strengthening engagement and stronger partnerships. So with like-minded countries elaborate. So you have to elaborate on this statement that Indo-Pacific region which is mainly centered on the two pillars that is strengthening engagement and as well as strengthening partnership. So you have to elaborate this statement. And next topic that I cover from AIR All India Radio here is European Union grants candidate status to Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia. So actually this topic it is not a new. Uh, actually I didn't discuss this topic so I am going to take this for discussion. So if you are talking about in context it mainly says that yes European Parliament which mainly voted for overwhelmingly grant European Union candidate status to Ukraine, Moldova and as well as Georgia. Okay, so here you have to see the map and you have to locate where are these countries are present. So first of all, actually if you're talking about European Union, if you want to become the members, you have to fulfill certain criteria. And actually European Union now it mainly came up with this giving of candidate status for this Ukraine, Moldova and as well as Georgia. So if you're talking about Ukraine, so it is here, it is mainly sharing boundary, okay, boundary with Russia. And here below that we have Moldova and below that we have this Georgia. Okay, so Georgia, Ukraine and Moldova. So if you're talking about what is the procedure that need to be followed to join this European Union. Yes, for everything there will be the procedure, due procedure or due process of law. So what we, how we can go for following of the rules and we have to know what is the procedure for joining in this European Union. So first, if you want to get the membership of this European Union, first you need to get this uh, candidate status. Candidate status it is a number, nothing but the first stage of getting membership in this European Union. So the first step it is like to get this uh, candidate status. 
so first step is getting official candidate status so we are going to get candidate status for european union membership but this does not necessarily mean that the nation will join this european union so the first step here is yes they need to get this candidate status so when they are getting this candidate status means it is not necessary that that nation will going to join this european union so this is one important prelims fact and once after getting this candidate status so formal membership negotiations they will be begun so once they will be getting candidate status means yes the negotiations will be going on and this process which made involves adapt adoption of established european union and implementation of judicial administrative economic and other reforms okay they have to be done such that they can meet this uh, conditions of that so and so european union so first you have to get candidate status and later on you have to go for negotiations and after negotiations you have to go for some changes in your administration regarding judicial administrative economic other reforms okay and these conditions they need to satisfy the criteria and following that the completion of this membership negotiations and also accompanying the no reforms so they will go for whenever there is a satisfaction that is mainly seen on both sides so the country will going to become the member of this european union so these are the some important steps yes that we need to follow to get the membership in this european union so first candidate status next negotiation according to that negotiation they can come up with reforms and finally it will be accepted okay so this is a process and you have to know what is a requirement to become the member of this european union so here in european union we have article 49 article 49 of this european union treaties they mainly says that european nations that seeks to join this blocks so all countries didn't join this european union there are some countries which are left so if other countries if they want to join this european union they must be committed to respecting promoting european union's fundamental values so these fundamental values of this european unions they are mainly present in the article 2 okay so these include respect for freedom democracy equality and as well as true rule of law so these all should be respected in that country and that organization that is european union and next one is after application once is received so your european union members they judge the suitability of this nation on the base of these terms on the base of this article 14 and article 2 so uh, once whenever any country which mainly submitted this uh, this application means they will be seeing whether it is uh, whether it is uh, suitable or not for this european union and this european council which mainly met in copenhagen in 1993 and in this copenhagen meeting that led to set out more specific criteria and this criteria is commonly called as copenhagen criteria and this criteria which mainly includes essential conditions that all candidate countries they must clarify or they must satisfy so then only they are going to going to get this membership so now let us try to see next topic is regarding what is helmet spyware and how it can affect smartphones so actually now we are came up with one more attack cyber attack so that is a helmet spyware so here you can get a question like so recently helmet is seen in news so what it is related to that is a spyware so if you see context it mainly says that look out a cloud based security company so a cloud based security company which mainly recently discovered a new spyware and the name of that spyware is helmet so here this helmet which has capability of affecting both android and as well as apple phones that is i o uh, sorry i o s devices and it is going to affect our android phones and even iphones so if you're talking about details of this spyware so this how it is a commercial spyware and is also known to be used by government in with the victims in kazakhstan and even italy and as well as northern syria so in this governments like kazakhstan italy northern syria this they allowed and this spyware which was mainly detected in this kazakhstan in april 2022 and after that government which mainly violated this uh, suppressed products against this government policies 
and next one is if you're talking about this hermit modula so it is like a malicious it is having some capabilities in packages and as well as downloaded after it once it deployed and these modules along with the permissions the core apps they may enable hermit to exploit the root device so this will be mainly having some impact on the root device and as well as they will be having some impact on the recording of video and make the uh, redirect of phone calls etc messages callbacks uh, and as well as contacts photos etc and even sms as well sms messages so these are some important things that we can see in this uh, hermit spyware and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding bis formulates standards for electric vehicles batteries following spate of fire incidents so here we saw number of times that here because of this electric vehicles okay so whenever they park or whenever in the running also whenever they are running with the low battery so at that time so they are mainly catching the fire and even recently one bus in hyderabad which mainly kept a charging station so while charging itself that bus entirely burnt okay so because of this now there is an increasing of fear in the people to go for this electric vehicles right and now let us try to see context if you see context it mainly says that so because of this recurring incident that is the incident which is happening the happening continuously so because of this recur recurring incidents of fire in electric vehicles so the bureau of indian standards that is bis which mainly came up for the first time that they formulated performance standards for batteries which are mainly used in this electric vehicles okay they mainly said that they are going to come up with a time formulated performance and they are mainly focusing on even batteries life battery strength in this electric vehicles so here this is the image that i can see and if you are talking about details it mainly says that so this bis which has released standard test specializations for lithium ion interaction and as well as battery battery packs and as well as systems okay for the vehicles so they are going to check this lithium ion batteries and they are going to see the packings and as well as systems etc so bis which is also in the process to publish two more standards for batteries so it can also go for uh, send it can also going for publishing of this two more standard books for batteries and that will be used in the electric goods and even passengers they carry this vehicles okay so if you're talking about this uh, model that is is 1785 2022 mod standard so it has been formulated which is mainly focusing on considering of real life scenarios for electric vehicles and also they mainly come up with uh, parked vehicles battery running at low and high temperature and as well as battery shipped uh, system shaft system shipped so here this is nothing but it is mainly focusing on real life scenarios of this electric vehicle they are mainly said that yes we need to go for doing some research in this packed vehicles and battery running vehicles and they are mainly present at the low temperature and as well high temperature and even battery system which is mainly sh uh, shaped okay and next one here is standard the standard which also incorporates test procedure for the basic performance we are going to uh, test this basic performance characteristics and electric fun functioning and reliability okay reliability so for the battery packs and synonym for the eight high energy applications of this power application high power application so what happened whenever we are using this uh, batteries okay battery packs and as well system okay so that will leads to high energy application as well as higher power application and if you are talking about this bis so what is this bis you know that bureau of indian standards so it is like a national sta standards or national standards body of uh, india and this body which mainly works under department of consumer audit or consumer affairs which mainly comes under the ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution actually this bs bis which mainly est established okay under this act as it is a statutory body of Bu bureau of indian standards act of 2016 so we're talking about any bodies we can say they are constitutional bodies your statutory bodies non-statutory bodies 
So statutory body means if there is any article, uh, sorry, statutory body means if there is any act which mainly talks about that. So after forming the act, when you are coming up with that body, that is called a statutory body. And constitutional body means if any article in our Indian constitution which mainly talks about that, that is called as constitutional body. And if we have, if you are talking about non-statutory bodies, or like uh, they are like they are mainly formed because of presidential order, okay, or executive order. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic. Title says Rajasthan enters uranium mining issues LOI2 uranium cooperation. So here you need to focus on uranium reserves in India and not only in India but also in the world. So actually you know that uranium it is very much important for nuclear power generation. So now let us try to see this topic and I collected this topic from this business standard. So if you see context, it mainly says, so huge reserves of uranium was found at Rohil, okay, in Sikar district. And there are about over 120 kilometers from the state capital that is Jaipur. So from 120 kilometers from this Jaipur, we have this Rohil and actually there were huge reserves of this uranium, they were found here. So if you see details, it mainly says that, so after Jharkhand and Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan is the third state where uranium, which is considered one of the rare minerals in the world, it has been found. So as you all know that uranium it is one of the rare minerals. So here Jharkhand, Andhra Pradesh and now Rajasthan, they had this reserves. So we are talking about in the world, who, which is the largest producer of uranium. So here Kazakhstan, Canada and Australia, they are having the good reserves of this uranium and they are the largest producer of this uranium Kazakhstan, Canada and Australia. So India reports uranium mostly from Kazakhstan and as well as Canada. Okay, India mainly imports this uranium from this Kazakhstan and as well as Canada. And you have to know uh, one important thing. So you have to also know about this lithium. So lithium it is also one of the important thing which we need for electric batteries electric vehicles so recently we also discussed about this lithium triangle so let me know where is this lithium triangle located and if you're talking about commercial so Rajasthan government which has foraged into field of uranium mining by issuing letter of intent LOI to uranium corporation of India so because of this, this is the news and if you're talking about what are the uses of this uranium so uranium which is mainly used for generating of electricity that is called as nuclear energy and it can be also used as a medicine and as well as some defense equipment, photography, etc. And if you are talking about characteristics, so uranium it is a silvery white metallic chemical element. So it is a silvery white metallic chemical element and here uranium 235, it is one of the isotope, it is only naturally occurring isotope. And it is also having the capability of sustaining nuclear fusion reactions. So here you need to know what is a nuclear fusion and what is a nuclear fission. So if you see this map, then you can see major uranium production areas of India. As you all know, we have Andhra Pradesh, okay, and we have this Rajasthan. And here in Karnataka, in Kogi, and in uh, Rajasthan, we can see in Aravalli ranges. And here we have Son Valley area. And in Meghalaya, Kasi Hills, we have some amount of uh, uranium production. So this is an important uranium production areas in India. So that might be important from your pretense. And next topic it is regarding GST hikes, uh, government hikes GST for household items. So if you see this infographic, then you can easily see that for knives, spoons, forks and ladles, it mainly increased from 12 to 18 percentage. And for LED lamps and lights, it increased from 12 to 18 percentage. Water pumps and deep water well turbine pumps, so that mainly increased from 12 to 18 percentage. And solar water heater in the systems, so there is increasing of GST from 5 percentage to 12 percentage is very, very high. And for diary, increase from 12 to 18 percentage. And for roads, railways, metro, monuments, etc., that is also increased from 12 to 18 percentage. And Next one is ostomy appliances mainly decreased from 12 to 5 percentage and orthopedic appliances also decreased from 12 to 5 percentage. So these are the areas where that had been increased. So if you are talking about context, it mainly says that 
so from july 18th onwards tax hikes they will kick in for over two dozen goods and services so here they are mainly talking about even unbranded food items curd and as well as buttermilk low cost hotels and cheap and checks and as well as maps so in these areas all that led to increasing of gst and if you are talking about details it mainly says that tax will be lowered for about half dozen goods and as well as services so tax will be lowered okay so here if you see here so tax which had been lowered for about half of the dozen of these goods and services for example trucks and as well as roadways etc and here some items that had been increased okay gst had been increased and if you see the recent meeting which mainly completed so the dozen states they wanted this gst compensation to continue for some more time so actually when we came up with this gst okay in 2017 the central government accepted that we are going to give you compensation for the next 5 years and this 5 years is going to be completed okay so because of this now here number of countries they mainly say that they have to extend this extend this gst compensation and if you are talking about what are the reasons for the rise of this uh, interest uh, that uh, gst slabs why what is the reason so there is a sharp increase okay in because there is increasing of tax evasion so mainly to come back or mainly to prevent this tax evasion measures so they came mainly came up with this increasing of hike and it's one is rationalization of measures which are mainly taken by the gst council to correct individual in, inverted duty structure so what is inverted duty structure so if you want to produce so and so product for example let us take this pen so if i want to produce this pen i need some raw material so on this raw material also i need to pay tax the tax which is mainly paid on this raw material which is more compared to that of this final product right so this is called as inverted tax structure so now let us try to see next topic it is regarding anti defection law so because of this ongoing maharashtra political crisis so now let us try to see this topic in a great detail and i will try my level best to make you understand this anti defection law so this topic is important from your polity point of view which mainly comes from the gs paper too and this topic will be important from your mains and even in your prelims so if you see here context what is the context so the context here is so even though we came with this anti defection law and we added to our indian constitution so there is some practice of this legislators they are changing political parties okay so they are mainly cha- changing their political parties so because of this this is one of cause of concerns so here anti defection which mainly deals with the changing of political parties so even though we came up with this we came up with this anti defection law also so there is no proper change that we can see so here this law which is called as anti defection law and this law which mainly meant to arrest the practice of legislators from changing political affiliations during their term in office okay so if you're talking about this anti defection law which is mainly talking about to prevent the legislature from changing from political party to another political party and if you're talking about maharashtra which is mainly facing some political crisis now okay so and many others before this also there are many states they had been followed this so if you're talking about some facts regarding this anti defection law so it is also called as 10th schedule of indian constitution and it's properly known as anti defection act and mainly added through our con- to our constitution through 52nd constitution amendment act of 1985 and finally they also came up with different sets and the provisions of disqualification of entitled members on the grounds of defection to another political party okay so what happen whenever one person political person who is mainly moving from party 1 to party 2 here so there will be the defection and who is responsible for deciding the defection that is the that is a house house uh, who is the speaker of the house or whether this uh, chairman of the house that is presiding officer he is responsible to decide whether it will comes under this uh, anti defection law or not right and even there are some exceptions like so if two third members of any political party they are joining the another political party but in that case there will be no dis- defection so if we talking about some grounds of disqualification so whenever elected member who voluntarily shifting from one party to pol- another political party 
and if elected member who abstains from the voting in house okay so he will be also disqualified and next one is if any independent elected member joins any political party so independent elected member he should not join any political party and the nominated member he can join the political party within 6 months but not after 6 months and if you are talking about what what is the thing what happens when there is a defection so it will leads to instability like political system has found ways to topple governments and here speaker usually the ruling party he may delay the decisions and uh, here because of this uh, you know uh, because of this anti defection law it will also promotes hot trading and even recent examples like karnataka madhya pradesh pondicherry uh, and as well as recent maharashtra and next one is we can go for understanding the representative and national parliamentary democracy and next one is sub version of electoral mandate so these are the some important things that will lead to instability so now let us try to see one students question regarding this topic so which of the following are the grounds of anti defection so please try to read the statements and give me the correct option and even 2022 prelims there was one statements regarding this anti defection law and one more main question here is anti defection law undermines representative and parliamentary democracy critically analyze the statement so this is the main question and now let us try to see the yesterday's question the first one is regarding allahuddin khalji allahuddin khalji maintained a large permanent standing committee and he mainly paid in cash yes next one is regulations were issued to fix uh, the prices of all commodities okay and popularly called as market reforms yes and next one here is he was the first sultan of delhi who ordered for the measurement of land yes so correct option is all the above and next one it is regarding ikta so iktas or hereditary assignments iktas were personal and properties of soil and next statement here is generally iktas they were transferable revenue assignments so all these three are correct so correct option will be four so today's question is the first one is regarding harappan civilization and second one is regarding mathura school of art so please try to read the statements and give me the correct option in the comment box and now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so before that i want to make a small announcement we in rathore says we came up with this mains answer writing practice course and this course duration is one year so here in this one year course we are going to give you weekly targets on based on that weekly target daily one mains question will be given to you and there will be evaluation of your answer and we also provide you one to one mentorship and also modal answer so this course absolutely beneficial the cost of this course is just 7200 rupees for one year so please try to join this course this will be absolutely beneficial and you can visit our website rathore science academy to join this course and apart from that we also launched this foundation course for upsc cs 2023 2024 2024 2025 so here in this course we are mainly focusing on especially each and every topic and we are focusing on concept of clarity and more than 600 hours of classes with the validity of 2 years so please try to join this course so that will be absolutely beneficial and now you can get this course at an offered price that is 49000 rupees for 2 years which even includes prelims and series and as well as mains answering course so now let us try to see today's hindu pdf so this is our today's hindu pdf okay so here the date is 20 it's 30th june 2022 and this is deliberation so first topic is regarding uddhav resigns after supreme court denies stay on floor test so here uddhav uddhav thakre he mainly resigned okay for his post and it's related to regarding household items i discussed this topic and the next topic it is regarding this uday murder case udaipur murder case in rajasthan so what happened in this uh, case which mainly investigated by this national investigation agency and mainly found that two of the people who accused so one's name is mohammad riyas and the next person name here is mohammad uh, first person he is is mohammad riyas athari he is of bilwara next one is gos mohammad 
of Udaipur. And actually, here in this investigation, they found that they had some links with this Pakistan and Pakistan terror group that is Daulat, okay, Daulati Islam group. They had some linkages. And if you are moving forward, so you can leave the city page, there is nothing much important. And if you move directly to this editorial page, so there is an article regarding this Udaipur killings, okay, so you have to refer this article and I yesterday I, in this uh, in the analysis I discussed this topic and if it is regarding anti-defection law I discussed this topic and if you move forward you can see Indian challenge in Afghanistan as you all know India which mainly made a lot of investments in Afghanistan but those are mean standstill and now we said that this Afghanistan which mainly hit by this uh, earthquake and it's a very very high magnitude earthquake it is mainly trying to seek some help okay so this is about this topic and if you move on to text and context, there is one article regarding Turkey made peace with this Sweden and Finland joining NATO. So actually here Finland, Finland and Sweden, they want to join this NATO, but it is mainly opposed by Turkey. And now finally Turkey, which mainly made with the peace. And here these Sweden and Finland, they are going to join this NATO now. If we are talking about why this Turkey, which mainly accepted. So you have to know the reasons. So now Finland and Sweden, they mainly promise to address counter-terrorism activities. So first one is they mainly promised for counter-terrorism activities and even Sweden which mainly assured that it will implement new terrorist offense act. And second important reason here is Turkey which had raised concerns about Finland and Sweden bring being home to Kurdish activities activists and as well as militant organizations okay so here turkey which is mainly have some fear regarding this uh, active terrorist organization or active militant organization which are present in this finland and sweden and third important reason here is they may talk about lifting of armored arms embargo okay so there has been no clear definition about the category of weapons okay but finland and sweden they will remove this uh, arms embargo against turkey Okay, so because of these reasons, it is mainly accepted. And if you're talking about why it is important for NATO, so NATO for NATO also it is important because actually they or whenever these countries are joining this NATO, that will lead to strong alliance. Okay, that will lead to strengthening of alliance. And even Finland and Sweden, they follow this non-alignment principle. They have broken their natural rule and they decided to join this NATO. And this one is NATO will gain strategic ground to counter Russia and a situation which is a more which is of more allies means a study exploration of NATO and next one here is whenever this uh, countries are mainly becoming part of this uh, NATO so here NATO will have some authority to increase its presence on the land as well as in the Baltic Sea that will be helpful mainly to counter Russia and next one is here that will be also helpful for securing of Euro Atlantic okay so this is about this topic and if you move forward here there is one article regarding this internet of things actually in 2018 if i am not wrong there was one question regarding this internet of things and if you move on to this page number 10 you can see two articles are important that is restore it is going to launch sat three satellites today so one is PSLV C 53 next one is 55th flight of ISRO workhorse launch like that is PSLV C-56 and apart from that it is also carrying uh, satellites from Singapore. Next one is satellites of DSEO. It is a Singapore Earth Observation Satellite. And next one is NewSAR. It is Singapore's first small commercial satellite. And next one is India Australia. They are going to have different stocks in Dehradun. So you can refer about relations or areas of cooperation between India and Australia and if you move forward in this page number 12 you can see there is one article regarding Landsat study so this article which is mainly talking about road accidents and deaths which are contributed due to this road accidents so here regarding this road accident we have one convention that is Brasilia convention you have to remember that and if you move forward here in this world page there is nothing much important and here in this business page you can see depreciation of rupee so rupee weekends passed 79 on dollar okay so these are some important articles 
that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please subscribe to Rathod Science Academy and don't forget to like, share and comment my videos. And don't forget to enroll to the courses that we are providing in our Rathod's IS Academy and you can visit our website. And if you have any queries, you can call me on this number 8074765513. Okay, and this is also WhatsApp number. And you can text me on WhatsApp also. And if you want to get the PDF of this class, you can join the Telegram channel. And the Telegram channel, not only the PDF you are posting, but we are also giving you updates regarding some important current affairs also. So by this, I'm concluding. Thank you so much.